Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I was going to join you with something of a philosophical video. It was my intention to talk about, and I've, I made some notes, the top lessons that I learned through my military life experience. I did a video about this in the past, but I, I've had more thoughts, more opinions, and I thought I would bring you some more lessons in which I would say how my military experience alters the way that I approach life today. Now, just a caveat, I was in the Royal Air Force for 10 years, over 25 years ago. So the lessons or habits that I was going to talk to you about today were quite highbrow, right? And I made notes. I was going to talk to you about how the unique and demanding experience of being an active duty, regular military serviceman instills within you discipline, leadership, followership, which is often not talked about, uh, resilience, adaptability and integrity and honour. And I made extensive notes. And then I thought to myself, do you know what? All of those things are rather high-minded approaches to how the military affect my daily life. The reality is, although those things are important, they are not the things that I learned which affect my daily, actual, lived experience of life. So today, and all I've done, I've created a little post-it note with the things which actually the military has changed my life for the better. So I'm going to tell you about those, let me think, how many are there? Five things how the military influences me today, 27 years after I parted company with the military after a decade of active duty regular service. Now, the first habit that I picked up from the military, which permeates into my life and always will, is never be late for anything in life. All right. I, I remember, you know, my first day in, in basic training where the instructors tell you to be ready at, I don't know, 5 a.m. or whatever it is with all your kit ready. And they are there sort of 10 minutes before and they expect you to be ready 10 minutes before. The reality to life is if you turn up on time, exactly on time for an event, in reality, you're late. If somebody says, I'll meet you at 10 in my world, I'm there 10 minutes before. Now, if I've got an important meeting in an office or something, in a business environment, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm walking in through the door 30 minutes early and then I've arrived early. I'm causing bother and fuss to the people who are expecting me at 10. What it means is probably, and I did it last week, when I had an important meeting to go to, I uh, made the journey beforehand to make sure I knew exactly what time I was going to get there. I wasn't going to get caught out by unexpected traffic, finding out somewhere to park my car, all of those logistics of life which make arriving on time a challenge. I did a dry run through beforehand. Then I got there early and I got to where I could see the place that I was going to, but I went for a walk around the block. Or if, if it was an opportunity, I could have gone into a coffee shop and had a little break, relaxed myself, got ready for the event that I was going to take part in. If it's a job interview, it's an important meeting, it doesn't matter what it is. This is something which I apply to my ordinary life. Being on time for something is functionally being late for it. I am always early, that way I walk into the meeting, I'm not, I'm not flustered, I've not just struggled to get through traffic or had difficulty finding a parking space. My mind is clear, I'm ready for the situation. And the military taught me that from the get-go. Because if you're ever late for something in the military, well, just make sure you're good at doing press-ups because you'll be spending a lot of time looking at the floor in close proximity going up and down because you get punished if you're late for things in the military. And in my life, that's what I've taught my family. My son now follows the values which I have instilled within him about being on time. And I can tell you right now, hand on heart, all right, in all of my life, since I've been in the military, I have never been late for any meeting or function where it's been in my control not to be so. Something might have happened which prevented me getting there, but I have never been late because I've overslept or didn't plan in advance. Timeliness was the number one lesson that my time in uniform taught me. Now, the next lesson I was taught in the military way of life was everything 
has its place. It doesn't matter what your job is in the military, what your function is, being squared away, these terminologies that we use in our ordinary life today, that originates from the military world. Because, you know, in the military, it depends on what your circumstances are. There were times where I shared a barrett block with a number of people in one large room, or sometimes I shared smaller rooms with four people or two people, and then as I became more senior, I got my own room. But whatever situation you find yourself in, you're always in a small living space in comparison to the civilian world, all right, where you have maybe a house or a flat and your, your crap is everywhere. In military life, you've got a small space and you know you've got all of your uniform, all of your combat gear, your kit, you've got your, prov your personal clothes, your civilian clothing, it all has to fit in the wardrobe that you've got, in the locker that you've got, it all, it all has to have its place. Because if something is disorderly, you are disorderly. You can't discharge the functions of your job if you can't find that vital bit of kit that you need when you're about to go out through the door or when you get called on to go into a dynamic situation. It's no good saying, hang on a minute guys, I can't find my belt or my, you know, my knife or whatever it may be. You've got to know where things are and the best way to do that is keep everything in its place. In my office today, I might not be the tidiest person in the world, that is true, I do have papers on the desk and things like that, but I know where they are, what they're for and where the important things are to hand immediately. Because I've planned and I've prepared and everything has its place. Life is so much less stressful if you adopt that habit into your life. Now one ideology I adopted when I was in military service is quite simply, nobody else does the ironing for me in my life. I take responsibility for the way that I look and I then take the plaudits and the accolades when I get the compliments. And when it comes to ironing, well, it's a bit like a signature, all right? I think everybody has their own way of ironing things. And when you learn your signature, of course, you'll do that signature for the rest of your life. For me, my ironing becomes something of, you know, a personal crusade for me. I enjoy ironing. I find it a cathartic experience, but also I know that the shirts and the trousers that I iron typically, most commonly, are always going to look spot on. They're not going to have two lines down the leg where I've misaligned the ironing. I've got one sharp crease. In my shirts, I like the way that I iron the crease down the center of my sleeve. I like the way that I iron the individual panels and how I iron them. When I take responsibility for my own simple function, like ironing, it carries across to other elements of your life too. You will develop an interest in the details and also making sure that those details are delivered to your satisfaction. So whilst I use ironing as an example of how I've taken charge for doing a daily ordinary function for myself because I, I raise that level of that activity to what I require and need out of life, that could be carried across to many other aspects of your life too, doing your own laundry, so on and so forth. I can honestly say I have been married for 16 years. My wife has never ironed one of my shirts or a pair of my trousers because I do that. Now she may do most of the ironing in the family because you know she likes things in a certain way, the same as I do. But the things which go against my skin, which people will look at when they see me walking down the street, the crease in my trousers, the way that my shirt is ironed, that's my responsibility. If I fail in that task, I carry the burden of failure. If it's successful and I get complimented, well, that's down to me too. So that's one of the things which the military taught me is that the ironing buck stops with me, as well as all those other things which you could substitute quite easily for ironing. Now, the next habit which I picked up in the military, which is kind of instilled within you within the very beginning, is I always take time and interest in polishing my footwear. All right? Now, a lot of people will appreciate this because, you know, in this modern world, the intentionally well-dressed man amongst us will know that your shoes are the foundation of your outfit. That people will look at you and even though you might have a rather cheap suit on, they might see your shoes and if you've got a mirror shine, they will think, ooh, here's a chap who you know, takes interest in his appearance. And that will typically carry across to other elements of your life too. So a nicely maintained and polished pair of shoes indicates to an observer that you're somebody who's got something about you. The military teaches that to you from the get-go. 
And why is it that they do that? Well, for a start, when we're a body of people all in a uniform entity, all right, so we're all looking the same, we all want to represent that organization that we're wearing the uniform on the behalf of to the best of our ability. So having a well-polished pair of shoes, it makes us stand out from the crowd. All right? It lets people know we've taken time and effort in our appearance. We are a professional body of people. We are interested in the way that we look and how that portrays across to the people who will meet us. That's important. It screams professionalism. These are people you don't want to mess with. If they've gone to the extent of putting a mirror shine on all of their shoes, it lets you know they've definitely cleaned their weapons. They're definitely on top of all their other kit. Now, the other thing is, when you polish your shoes, when you spend a bit of personal time with your footwear, you get to look at them, you examine them. You can see that there, there, there might be damage. They might need to go to the cobblers for a repair. The sole is wearing down. Maybe if it's a leather sole shoe, you can feel that soft patch in the middle of the ball of your foot, which is the telltale sign the leather is about to fail. And if you can take it to the cobblers and get it repaired at that point, you could save the pair of shoes, or at the very least, you can save yourself getting wet feet. Because if that leather goes through and you're out for a day's trekking or walking around the city, and it's a rainy day, the water's gonna seep through the hole in your shoe, and there's nothing less pleasant than having a wet foot all day. So that's one of the advantages. When you are down there spending time with your footwear, polishing them, you get to keep an eye on them. The maintenance is always good. And of course, polish has an important function. It prevents the ingress of water through the leather. Your leather will be protected. That polish shell over the shoe, it's a little overcoat against the rain. Your shoe will be protected. The leather's gonna last longer. You're gonna be more comfortable. Your foot's not gonna go wet. All of these things play into the favor of somebody who maintains their footwear, looks after them, and polishes them regularly. So that's one of the things which the military taught me. And it's one of the things which people often spot. Because I typically, if I'm wearing dress shoes, I try to have a mirror shine on my shoes if it's that sort of situation. And people will come up to me, they will compliment me on the shoes without fault. And often the next question will be after they've complimented the shoes, were you in the military? Because they associate it, polished shoes, with the professionalism, the attention for the detail, and that pride in appearance, which service personnel often exhibit. And if you can leverage that good feeling from people, they look at your shoes and they associate you with professionalism, quality, well, isn't that worth spending a bit of time putting a polish on your shoes? So, a great habit to pick up. Now the final habit which I picked up from the military, which can sound strange to many people, is the humour, which is important in the life of anybody who wears a uniform and is involved in situations perhaps of danger, perhaps of strife where you're seeing things which are unpleasant. For me that carried over when I left the military, I went into law enforcement. And that's what people often describe as black humour becomes a really important part of a coping strategy to life. Because if you can see the funny side of things, and it's not flippancy, it's not degrading a situation by making a joke when it seems inappropriate. What you're doing is diffusing a stressful situation. If you can say something which lowers the level of seriousness just for a moment, it's not unnecessary levity, it is a stress relieving, relieving pill, which you can inject into a moment of life where everybody's tense, worried, frightened, you're seeing something awful. It might be the scene of a car accident, if it's a combat situation, uh, which I never experienced, but you know, if it's a situation of high danger, a moment of humor can really work in your favor. It can put your mind back in a better frame and allow you to perform a little bit better. Just taking that edge of stress off. Now to somebody from the outside world, black humour seems utterly inappropriate. They don't understand why you would make a, a joke about death or something horrible. But then they've never walked that mile in your shoes. They do not know the experiences that somebody in that part of life has had. So a little bit of humour brings down the stress. And I've used that many times in my civilian life, as well as you know, the military and in my law enforcement career. A little bit of stress can help with bonding. Human beings often bond much more readily 
over humor. So if you can tell a little joke, if you're in a mixer amongst people you don't know, sometimes a little bit of humor can really make people warm to you and want to talk to you. And this can be a game changer in creating networks and making relationships with people you don't know. Keeping it, of course, appropriate for the situation. I'm not suggesting we start go out there and banding around humor, which is not appropriate for a situation, but a little bit of humor can really be the pill to the problems of life. So there we go. Those were the habits which I picked up in military life. I'm gonna reach down, pick my book up. Now they're not what I wrote out in longhand and intended to tell you about today. These things about honor and integrity and, and leadership. Maybe that's for another video in the future. But these simple habits I've leveraged to make my life a more successful and better journey. And I think you could do too. So, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Uh, you can contribute to the channel by, you can buy me a coffee, you can leave me a comment, you can drop me an email, you could even become a patron where I make additional video content for the people who support the channel. And all of the information to access all of those things are in the show notes below. So, until the next time, use my habits to make your life a better place. And I will see you again very soon.